Right, creativity can heal. This is a story in three parts and any good story has to have some opening credentials, credits, sorry, <laughs> and some closing credits. These are my opening credits. This is filmed in December 2019. This is filmed at Her Majesty's Prison, Stamford Hill, an open prison on the Isle of Sheppey. The guy performing is a performer called C Roots. He's quite a performer. This was filmed six days after the London Bridge terror attacks where three people sadly lost their lives. It put the whole system on lockdown. So anyone in this open prison who had a right to leave there citizen right to leave was on lockdown they could not so we filmed them it was a week after this they had organized a gig to perform on the outside that they were deprived from being able to do this is a story called creativity can heal i'm neil sartorio but i'm not the protagonist to it so you won't hear much about me and it's a story that comes in three parts that i'd like to share with you today part one the world is wounded the world is wounded. We live in a time of infinite possibilities. Uh, the phrase the fourth industrial revolution might mean something to you, but with those infinite possibilities, we've created a world that is wounded. Let's take four places in this world. Let's go to Greater London where I live. A third of our children in Greater London grow up in poverty. We've created a world that is unequal. Let's look at the UK. Every week that goes by, every three days, we lose a woman's life at the hands of a former partner or a current partner. We've created a world where some people are very, very unsafe in it. Let's zoom into my favorite place in the world, Bracknell. Bracknell was nestled next to the M4, the greatest motorway in the world because it's a gateway to Wales. Yes. <laughs> and it also has a population of about 120,000 people, which if I removed all of them, I could fill it with every homeless child in our two countries. I could treble the population by asking all the homeless adults to go and live there as well. We've created a world where the very basic human right of having shelter is not a basic human right. It's sometimes a luxury. Let's go across the pond to America, one of the wealthiest countries in the world. 10 million children are born into what they call persistent poverty, which means between the ages of zero to 17, they're in poverty and 16 16% of them, by the time they get to 30, would have escaped that poverty trap. The world is wounded. The world needs to heal. Let me take you back to December when that last video was filmed and introduce you to a person I was introduced to, H. H came up to me that day and said, I've been writing poetry. Every year I've been in this institution, I've written a poem to sum up the year I've had. And this was the last poem he was going to write. He presented me with a book because he was going to leave that island, leave that institution. The book was 14 pages long. And the last poem that he writes on that island I wanted to share with you today. It's time to put the past in the past. I can finally say that at last. I look at this man in the mirror and think how this boy has grown so fast. It's easy to hold grudges and be resentful to the core. But instead of holding weapons, let's hold olive branches and build bridges where they've been burnt before. I need positiveness with less bad news and doors to be open, but not by screws. Open-mindedness, penthouse views, and if bad shit happens, let it be under my shoes. Cause I could do with the luck for when I come unstuck. And if you haven't been there for me, <laughs> you obviously don't give a fuck. There's no other excuse. It's just their way. Going to prison is like an early funeral than seeing who comes to your grave. Seeing who's there, who really cares, and that's your best interest at heart. It's time to build a new me with new friends and bury my past. The birth of the new me, the new I, finally a fresh start so I can put my pen down, turn the page and close this chapter at last. 
Paige picked up a pen, thought about the year he'd had, wrote some words down and spoke them out loud. That creative process for him healed the wounds that were close to him that either he had created or the world around him maybe contributed for him to have in front of him. Part two, creativity can heal in every and any part of our society. But I want to zoom in on one particular part of society, the offender community, if such a thing exists. The stats around it, the mighty Wrexham you could fill with everybody who's incarcerated in England and Wales. Let's go to your nation's capital. Cardiff, you could fill it twice over with everyone who's got an unspent conviction in England and Wales. The glorious nation of Wales, you could fill three times over for the people who have a criminal conviction and still have two million short change out of it. This is a big community of people and it's growing. 64% reoffending rate for anyone who enters prison and stays there for 12 months. You are more likely to go back. That community is growing. Now, what characterizes that community? Well, we have a whopping 80% unemployment rate in our prisons. That's coupled with less than one in 10 people doing anything mildly related to skills, development or transfer that they can use later in life. And then that is put against an annual rise of violence in those institutions by 88% each year. These are dark places. And I was very interested and excited two and a half years ago to wonder whether or not you can go into there and find the light. And I did get invited there two and a half years ago by three gentlemen in a high secure prison on the same island, the Isle of Sheppey. These were individuals who were resident for life. This was back in 2017. And I spent the day with them and they had had three days actually of thinking about what would it that motivate them to change their lives going forward or engage in their lives going forward. And I heard some amazing music. I saw a blueprint for a vision and I saw a lot of aspiration for the future. And I left that high security prison to drive home singing in my head one of the songs that they had, had created and shared with me, which was called Free. I won't sing it for you because it's not one of my, my best talents singing, but it was ringing around my head. And I wrote back to them and made them two offers that I, I had kind of said in the room, which was, firstly, wherever you take this, guys, you have my belief that you can, you can make something of it. And secondly, wherever you want to take it, if you think I can help, I will. They called it, we wrote this together. And that later changed. Part 2A of the story is meeting that label for change called in-house records, which that day has now become. In-house records is the world's first fully functioning record label, which operates from inside Her Majesty's prisons. It operates in six prisons, dealing with hundreds of residents of those prisons through a process that allows them to create music, understand where they want to take their future lives, perform music. And actually, because we've been going two and a half years, we have graduates who have now come into society again. So we have three live music venues where we continue that performance. We continue the work of creating music together, understanding where they can take their lives. And really importantly, we have a 0% reoffending rate for everyone we've been working with. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> now, in-house records at its very, very core is about creativity. And creativity happens, as I've observed, in three ways in this situation. Firstly, the creativity of the art itself. They're making music. That's a creative process. You reflect, you think, you perform. It's an amazing cathartic thing for anyone to do. But if you go into through the gate environments, it's amazingly powerful. So that's one aspect of the creativity. But I also observed two others that I want to share with you. Secondly, it's creativity of engagement. How do you go to a population that's 80% out of work, less than 10% interested in skills development and a soaring violence statistic and bring them out of the corners of the wing in a positive way where they want to do something with their lives, even if their life is inside that environment they are in. And music pulled them out of the shadows and into the light to at least give it a go again. Amazingly powerful amazingly creative. And thirdly, the creativity of the development process. And this is twofold. 
One about how we develop the label, how we develop the music, it's all co-designed. It's all around understanding and listening to the human, listening to what they want. And that's why I tell you the story of two and a half years ago, I'm not standing up here saying I had the idea. It's co-designed, it's created, and it's always shared and it's always open sourced. But also development about their skills. So often you go to places and it's like, where's the CV? Where's the transferable skills? In those situations, you try and take some people and put them in a classroom, put them in a workshop, you're not going to develop skills. What you need to do is focus on what is strong, not what went wrong. And actually the transferable skills of many people we meet is incredible. There's natural entrepreneurship, an attitude to risk. There's positive in the business world sometimes. <laughs> Logistics, stock, quality control, customer satisfaction. All these things are very, very transferable into the business world, into any kind of world. So I could carry on for the last seven minutes and talk just about the work within House Records. But there's something else that's happened over the past two and a half years that I wanted to share with you that again is an observation, which I think has been quite powerful, which is every time we do a gig in prison, every time we do a gig in one of our venues outside prison, every time we go to a funder or someone who might be able to help us and say, can you help in-house records? What happens is by a multiplier effect, people come with ideas to us creative ideas about solving the problems in the here and now we're facing, and they want to bounce the ideas around, which leads us to part 2B. Creativity cultivates creativity. I call it the positive domino effect. We've got people coming up to us talking to us about setting up boxing in disadvantaged parts of this country, about food courses, creating pop-up food courses that is the food that they managed to create, our pretty rubbish standard food that they got in prison and created amazing outputs. We've, be, we've talked about fashion labels. People have creative ideas that often get stopped in their tracks. And what we realized is we created a safe and enabling environment and space for people to bring us those ideas. Not so we can IP it or scale it or nick it, but just because they thought they want to see it come to life, have positivity and see if it can make a change in their circumstances. One such organization that came to us was the Soldiers Arts Academy. And there's a very short clip of someone who's in that ensemble that I just wanted to play because he explains it better what they're about than I do. The Soldiers Arts Academy, which is an opportunity for artists and veterans to come together and share ideas. So not only are you supporting new artists, but you're supporting veterans who may have snags and their pathway in the arts is helping them recover. That snag that he talks about was whilst on active service, hitting an IED, losing his colleagues, losing his leg, having shrapnel wounds all over his body, a snag. And um, he used theater, acting, the Soldiers Arts Academy to go through both a physical and mental process of rehabilitation and he would put it much better than I do. But the point I'm trying to make here is that two and a half years ago, we went into a relatively dark place in prisons and we've ended up in theater land with ex-service personnel, also understanding how they use creativity to get on with their lives. Creativity cultivates creativity. And if creativity heals, that's a very good thing, which leads me to the final part of this story. Part three, this story isn't written yet. But the Creativity Hedge Fund, it's something I've made up, but like it, it was a useful thought process, shorting our wounded world. So if creativity can heal and creativity cultivates more creativity that then can do further healing, I'm really taken by the concept of a hedge fund. Now, when, when I first understood what a hedge fund was, I realized that it's not like a tomato farmer who puts like a hedge around their field to protect it. It's a, it's a banking term where effectively people mitigate risk of near-term downsides and make money out of it. And they call that shorting. And I thought, that's really interesting. So you can bet on a bad thing and make money out of it. So I want long-term society to be good and make those long-term bets, but I don't really want to live my existence in the short term and have negativity. So my suggestion is we all create a creativity hedge fund together and use creativity as our currency and go out there and accept that we need to start shorting our wounded world to make positive impact now and not wait for system change after system change. And whether it's music, cooking, whatever, we can do that now and not accept some of the short-term negativity in our wounded world. Creativity can heal, 
the end, but it's not the end. It really, really needs to be a new beginning in my view. And as I said at the beginning, any story needs both opening credits and it needs closing credits. And I'd like Sea Roots to leave you as my closing yeah. credits. Are you feeling the vibes? I said, are you feeling the vibes? All right, guitar, come in, selector. Yo. Way indeed. This has been Creativity Can Heal. It's in three parts. Part one is that we have a wounded world, people. Do not put your head in the sand. Part two is that creativity can and does heal. And it cultivates more and more creativity that it goes on to heal. And the third part that is not written yet is that let's develop a creativity hedge fund together. Let's pay in not money, but ideas and positivity and try and short this wounded world into a better place while we still are on it, rather than necessarily have to wait to lay the foundations for future generations to clear up the mess that we left them. I leave you with Sea Roots, in-house records, and hopefully a positive step in your walk later today. Thank you very much.